Oliver Codd here. Um, today I'm going to show you a quick trick using the poly sustain patch in Mars to create new words and phrases. But first let's look at the options we have uh, within the, the user interface. We've got our basic xblend feature here. Okay, and that sounds pretty good. And that'll give you a huge range of different combinations you can do. The only problem with that is that each phrase here is being triggered simultaneously. So you don't have full control on where you're going to X fade between the two. You know, if I want to cross fade Bogoradice with Marie, say Bogoradice, that wouldn't be possible because by the time we're at Dice, this one will also be at Ye. So we can't do that. And the other options with the legato on, you know, you. It, it um, blends between the words in the same manner as the X blend. You know, this is being played while the other one's being played, even if you can't hear it. So that when you crossfade or, you know, switch between the notes, it's going to pick up at the same time where you left off on that one. So again, I wouldn't be able to do Tie Go Rie or something like that. So, what are we going to do? What, you know, if I have a very specific melody line, that has to follow a rhythmic structure that I wrote. And I want to create new words, but using the basic X blend isn't quite getting me there. What am I going to do? So I came up with this trick to give myself more control with the blending of words for my for my Mars track. Um basically what it is, you know, look at what they're doing here. They're blending, crossfading between the two different words. And my only limitation is that I don't have control as far as where in the word it's intersecting. You know, I, if I want it to end here and start there, I can't do that. So how do you get around that? You have to do it in your sequencer separately. So let's imagine this track is one set of words and this track is the other one. I can start laying out the structure of my, my melody. Um, using this, you know, I can overlay one set of words on top of the other one wherever I want, you know, can move them around, edit that so that it perfectly lines up with with my rhythmic structure. And then from there I'll cross fade um, within the sequencer using automation. So let me let me show you how it sounds without the cross fading. It'll be a little bit, you know, Okay, so that was the first set of words. Obviously, it's missing a gap because that's where the other one comes in to connect. So let's hear them together now. Since that's not crossfading yet, we've just got these stacked words, which doesn't sound very good. So let's take a look over here. Let me mute these, and let's look at what's actually going on. Here's the same passage, but with the automation data. And this is going to look really crazy and complicated, but it's not. Um, focus on these points where one is fading up, the other is fading down. You know, it's almost like it's mirroring each other, but not exactly. Um, because the, the fade isn't completely symmetrical like it is here. But I found that doing combinations of different, you know, angles here, one fades up really quickly while the other one's a bit slower. It gives you more freedom as far as how the words interact when they're fading and it yielded better results. Um, so play around with it, but here's how it sounds and try and try and keep track of what's going on. I know it's complicated, but hopefully you'll get a sense of what's going on here. Okay, so you can see, you know, 
one picks up here and where the other one leaves off. And same here, same here. So that's basically what I did throughout the entire piece. You know, each each choir line is gonna have two tracks where, where you're crossfading words. So the main one and then I've added more because I did a harmony and a an octave in, in the end part of the piece. basically what I did for my track. Uh, the whole thing is just poly sustains that I crossfaded outside of contact because I, I just needed that, that little bit extra control uh, as far as combining words go and, and I think the results were, were pretty good. So I'm going to make these uh, MIDI files available for you guys to download. I'll put the project file online as well um, for Logic users so you get the automation and so hopefully that'll that'll help you guys because I know looking at this is a, a little bit daunting, but it's really not that complicated if you just think about what's actually going on uh, inside of the user interface. It'll you know help you with with how to figure it out on your own. You know just cross fading. So you know that's all I did for the choir. Uh, with within the track I added a little bit of reverb, and that was about it. So you know here's it. In, in context. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you find this helpful and uh, happy composing. Alright.